is the content section, so just click on what you want to see, or you can let it, the video run. Here are the brief notes covering the Yak-1, which you can pause and take a look at. Okay, we're in the Yak-1 cockpit. We'll start off with the left side, and we'll look at the tailwheel control first. The control in the forward position means the tailwheel is unlocked, and then we pull it back and the tailwheel is locked. Above that we have the flaps, and these are only one stage, so they're either fully extended or they're going to be fully retracted. The control with the bright yellow top is the throttle. Pushing it forward increases manifold pressure, and pulling it back is idle, and that decreases manifold pressure. Below that we have the mixture controls. Pushing it forward makes it rich, and pulling it back leans it out. Now the control in front of the mixture is our supercharger. Pushing it forward to stage 2, then pulling it back as the default at stage 1. Now the outer black wheel here, that's the elevator trim wheel. And then inside of that we have the RPM control. Moving it towards you increases RPM, and moving it away from you decreases RPM. Now just shifting the camera into position, we'll look at the front instrument panel. Starting at the top and working our way around, we have the altimeter in meters and kilometers, the airspeed indicator in kilometers per hour, then the landing gear control, then on the right of that we have the clock, and going back up to the top we have our compass, and the turn and bank indicator, then we have the oil temperature gauge, and then the split of oil pressure and fuel pressure. Back up the top we have manifold pressure, then the tachometer, and then lastly we have the water temperature. Let's move the view over to the right a little bit. We can see the landing gear indicator here, and the lights are green, gear is down and locked. When it's blank it's in transition, and red is up and locked. That brown wheel is the oil radiator. Rotating it away from you opens the radiator, and pulling it towards you closes the radiator. And then moving over and looking at our lower right, we can see the water radiator in green. Again, rotating it away from you opens the radiator, and then rotating it towards you closes the radiator. You may have noticed that you haven't seen a fuel gauge yet, so looking out onto the wing, that's where the fuel gauge is. That's measured in litres, and above that you have the standard mechanical gear indicator. Visible means the gear is down, and when you don't see it, the gear is up. With the cockpit film all done, we'll look at how to start up the Yak-1. To start the Yak-1, we want to have the throttle inched forward a little bit, and then we have the RPM control fully away from us, put the mixture to full rich, and ensure both radiators are closed, followed by pressing E to start the engine. Now that the engine started, we can prepare for taxi. Do this by opening the oil radiator fully, unlocking the tailwheel, setting the RPM to max, and adjusting the mixture for best power. But we're going to skip the taxi and go straight to the takeoff. Coming up to the runway now, as always, since you've been taxiing, you want to make sure your tailwheel is put back and in the lock position. Then you roll forward a few extra feet, and this makes sure the tailwheel is straight, and this will give you a nice straight takeoff run. Should be good now, so now we can start applying the brakes, coming to a stop, and then we'll go through the takeoff checklist. So we close the canopy, tailwheel is already locked, throttle is at idle, mixture equipped to fully rich, set our RPM for the maximum, open the oil radiator it isn't done so already. Open the water radiator fully. Then we're going to increase the throttle to maximum, then we want to rotate at about 200 km per hour, then we can retract that gear and begin climbing. Note that I'm not using flaps on this, that's because the flaps are fully deployed in the yak and that adds too much drag on takeoff. Now as we increase the throttle we speed up and the nose will start pulling to the right, so you have to counter that with left rudder. So you want to do your best to keep it straight in the runway, Push the stick forward a tiny bit and get the tailwheel off the ground. Build up the airspeed, then we're going to be rotating about 200 km per hour. A gentle pull back on the stick, and we'll move up in the air. Now as we get airborne, make sure we have a positive rate of climb, so then we can raise the landing gear. And then we keep an eye for the two red lights to indicate the gear is up and locked. adjust the mixture and go through the landing checklist. 
Alright, so for the Yak, we set ourselves up for a 200 km per hour approach and uh, once we reach that point we have our RPM at 2200 and manifold pressure at 60. We close the water radiator to keep the temperature high. We make sure our gear is deployed at least by the end of the runway. We extend our flaps when the speed is below 250 km per hour. Then we turn on base when the runway is 45 degrees between the wing and the tail. And for this Yak approach we're going to be using the military style base and final. So it's going to be one circular turn, which will be continuous all the way until final approach. Then we'll roll out on final wings level at one and a half kilometers from threshold. All right, so we're establishing downwind. We've lowered the gear. We're closing the radiator. Then we're flying a reduced throttle while maintaining the same altitude to help bring our airspeed down to our goal of 200 k's an hour. So we're dropping below 250 kilometers per hour. We're at beam runway and it's under the wing, so that's good position. So we deploy the flaps. And since the flaps have deployed all in one go, that means the nose is going to be pitching up and we counter that by pushing the stick forward and now we're going to have additional drag so to maintain our speed of 200 km per hour we increase the throttle and then we'll be at 2200 rpm and 60 manifold pressure these settings will allow us to maintain our altitude and our speed and then once we reach that point where the runway is 45 degrees between the wing and the tail we'll start our circular base and final it looks a good position there so we can start turning Then we can reduce the throttle slightly and we'll start our descent and this will be one long continuous turn so the base and final are merged and we want to roll out about one and a half k's from the runway threshold so as we roll level towards final we make sure we have that good sight picture of the runway so we're not too high or too low and we maintain our approach at 200 kilometers per hour as it was on final, we're making those adjustments between our throttle and our pitch to keep ourselves on track for the landing. I'm not having to really make any adjustments here, so I know that my approach speed and my glide path is good. I just have to maintain it until touchdown. So we're getting ready for flare, we cut the throttle, then we continue pitching back until we touch down at 150km per hour. So now that you're safely on the runway, you start applying full back pressure, you can retract the flaps and then you'll be applying the brakes in bursts. Don't hold them down for too long or else you'll end up nosing over. That's the familiar video for the Yak-1. If you like these videos let me know by hitting the subscribe button in the top left corner and you can also let me know in the comments in the video below.